Um, I'm here to talk about what ails display and a cure for that. And I will tell you that having watched the debate last night, what ails display is not big bird binders or bayonets. It is banner blindness. So uh, I, I mentioned this in a couple of questions I asked yesterday around um, tonnage. So we've got an incredible amount of tonnage we've created. And I was doing a little calculation with Tom Shields during the break. Uh, we figure maybe about a trillion ads are served to the US audience, rough and tumble, each month. That's 200 million users, let's say. So let's just round it off and say that's 5,000 ads per person per month. That's 167 ads a day. So how on earth can those ads be relevant? I mean, if, if, you, if you make the argument, as I have made in the past, that retargeting is effective, OK, well, how many advertiser sites do you go to? How many products do you look at in a day? Is it 167? Maybe it's 80, so we can serve you twice a day? No, it's, it's, it's way less than that. So the challenge is that there just isn't enough intent for you to be serving this many ads. And this is a problem we all have. We're serving a lot of irrelevant ads. And just think about it. We're, we've created this amazing training vehicle. 5,000 times a month, we've trained every single user online to ignore this space. We're training them that they don't need to look at the ads. And so what's happened is people aren't looking at the ads. We see the heat map studies. You can see the studies where people literally, their eyes wrap right around that headspace. Um, and that's why Ned was saying earlier that uh, you know, the click-through rates today are abysmal, and they're just not, they're not compelling. They're not compelling because they're saying something about what kind of engagement advertisers have with ads. So I've beaten this horse to death. So let me just go on to what I think is potentially the solution here. So I'd say there are two things that we could do that tr would dramatically affect response rates, and we've seen it at our company. Number one is, let's determine what the user's interested in right now. That's what search does. They figure out what users are interested in right now when they get to the SERP. So that means doing the hard work of analyzing the context of the page and figuring out what users want, number one. Number two, serve ads only when we actually know that there's intent. Don't serve the ads when we know we don't have anything good to say. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything, because it's going to disparage all the other good things you might say to people. And the last thing is we should be serving ads in locations that kind of break through this cycle of banner blindness. Don't serve them in the same placement right at the top all the time or right in that wraparound 300 by 250 that sits in the right middle of the page. Come up with the new places. So that's what we're doing at Infolinks. We've launched this platform in three. It's a platform for publishers. It's in use today by about 100,000 sites in 128 countries. And what we do is we analyze the text of page, pages in real time. So when our ad tag gets called, we grab that text, we do that hard work of analyzing it. Every single time we get called in real time, we analyze about a trillion words a month. And we try to determine what's the intent of the user. And then we create ad, in ad spaces when we know we have intent and we have an advertiser that wants that intent. And we do that through keyword targeting. So that's what we do. What I want to do is take you through the example of just one of our units. We have four ad units that we power through our platform. But one of them is called InSearch. So um, what I have here is a, is a short video that I'm going to narrate myself. Um, let's see if it gets started. All right, there we are. OK, so InSearch is a unit that appears on your publisher sites only when someone comes from a search. So in this case, this person is doing a search for the word investing. When they get the search result on Google, they'll see, I think the first organic listing is for Investopedia. It's one of the publishers that uses our platform. So when a user clicks on that, our system is going to start doing that work I described. We're going to grab the text of the page, the, this page right here. We're going to look for that referring URL, and we're going to look for that search term. When we see the search term, we're going to create a unit that only exists on this page because someone came from a search. We're going to do a real-time auction based on that keyword to all of our advertising partners. And we're going to serve an ad only if we have somebody that's bidding above the minimum for that keyword. So we serve this unit here. It appears for f about five seconds or so. During that time, that's when the user is making that decision, do I want to stay on this page or do I want to go back to the search engine? Do I want to hit the back button? If the user hits the back button, what happens is the search engine knows they've got to bounce back. They think, well, maybe that listing wasn't the right listing for that search result, and that could hurt your SEO rankings. So we're trying to steal those back button clicks and at the same time give you a monetizable click, which is a click on that unit. 
Um, it, after five seconds, it minimized down to a little headline, unless you hover over it. And the reason is because the users made that decision. We're not going to interrupt the page after that point. So we're serving that unit only when there's intent. We're serving in an unusual location. And guess what? We get dramatically higher response rates. We get literally 30 times average click-through rates. In fact, our average click-through rate on this unit is 4%. And we can do that with several units around the, around the page, and we'd love to talk to you about it. So if you do have time, we'd love to speak to you. You can reach me uh, here the rest of the conference. Also, Kiana Carr, raise your hand, Kiana. It's from Infolinks. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about it and tell you how we can help you monetize your search traffic. Thanks. <laughs> Only if there's no questions. <laughs> Oh, you do? All right. Um, how do you define a viewable impression, and do you think that there will ever be a standard definition? OK, viewability is a big topic. Um, as, it relates to, as it relates to Infolinks, we actually only serve an ad when it's viewable, simply because we're only creating that unit when the user is, is on the section of the page where our ad renders. So as a, I don't know if the question is related to Infolinks or not, but if it is, we only serve viewable ads. But if the question is more generally, if an ad is viewable, I mean, I think the definition is pretty well established in the debates that have been having, you know, that the industry has been having. I think we'd probably be all better off if we just chopped out the ads that weren't viewable. I know it feels unfair when you compare online to other, other marketing media uh, to have to do that, because obviously no other media does that. But we need to be held to a higher standard. That's how we're going to get the rates, that's how we're going to get the demand, that's how we're going to move the advertising dollars over from traditional media is to be better, demonstrably better than traditional media.